Hello, bonjour, comment ça va Today we're talking about whether you should wait for the Oculus Quest number two or whether you should go ahead and splash your cash and buy Oculus Quest one. Just like a movie, just like a storybook, we are the future, we're the ones they won't overlook. Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of VR. My name is Lazius K, and today we're launching a brand new show called The Metaverse Show, where we talk about all the important aspects in the world of VR, AR, MR, XR. Oh my God, there's so many different. And that may affect you, impact our future and the rest of it. So today we're going to be focusing on whether you should splash your cash. I don't got swag. I got the or whether you should just go, uh, maybe, just maybe I should wait until when the Oculus Quest 2 is released. So back in September 2019, I uploaded another video which was about whether you should buy the Oculus Go or whether you should go ahead and buy the Oculus Quest instead. Because many of us, to be honest, we don't really have budgets to buy all the VR headsets that we want. So it's important to choose the right headset for us. And this video was more about the practical uh, application of purchasing a VR headset more than the gaming aspect. And back when the Oculus Quest first came out, there was about 50 titles available and most of them were very much more about gaming compared to the Oculus Go, which could, you know, have applications, for example, learning how to uh, do first aid on somebody, which is about, you know, potentially saving someone's life to having other apps where you can improve your eyesight and, uh, you know, and also training how to speak on stage, learning languages, all those kind of things, which really wasn't available and still pretty much isn't available on the Oculus Quest, unless you use, of course, a cable or you would hook up to virtual desktop and access PC VR kind of titles where you could effectively use the Quest for those purposes. So, the question really isn't so much whether you should wait for the Oculus Quest 2 or the Oculus Quest or go and buy the Oculus Quest 1 today. It's more about do you want to buy into the Oculus ecosystem and really try to understand what the ecosystem of Oculus really is about. Well, first of all, we need to look at the fact that, you know, Oculus, of course, is owned by Facebook. So this means there's potentially one or two billion users who would, well, who are on Facebook. So when you join the Oculus ecosystem, so when you buy the Oculus Go or the Oculus Quest, already it'll be much easier for you to meet more people in virtual reality from the start. So you'll be able to make a lot of friends and go on to all those different social applications, for example, VR chat or alt space or even their you know esports kind of game like eco VR for example and you can already start making friends chat with them even in tribe XR if you like to DJ or you want to learn how to DJ or you're a professional DJ and you want to meet other DJs then you know you can go on tribe XR and DJ with other people in their uh, you know in, in one of the functions that they have on the app which is called rooms so the thing is you don't have to go into an app in order to meet those people you can just meet them in Facebook, joining all the different Oculus Quest groups that are on Facebook or the Oculus Go groups or the Oculus groups and just start meeting people. That when you're actually going to perhaps buy another headset, for example, let's look at the Pico Neo G2 or, you know, which is another standalone headset, which is, you know, going to be available for the general public very soon. You know, it doesn't really have a user base in the West, especially it's more geared towards the China market or maybe the Asian market. So despite its great specs, you know, in terms of trying to connect with other people for social aspects, social gaming or socializing or trying to stay connected with the world or meet people for different reasons, whether it's professional or whether it's a creative reason, you know, this would be, first of all, the, 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 the question you may want to ask yourself, do I want to join the Oculus ecosystem or do you want to join another ecosystem which might make it a bit harder for me to or for you to actually meet other people in virtual reality itself so when we talk about the oculus ecosystem also what we need to understand is the fact that facebook have so much i wouldn't just say money of course they have a lot of financial backing from various different sources but also they have a lot of influence within the actual ecosystem of gaming. And also they have a lot of influence. I mean, if Facebook was to call, let's say IBM tomorrow or HP tomorrow or whatever other company, Adidas, Nike or whoever else, they, people will take their phone call. They will get that meeting. They will be able to meet those people, create those partnerships and, and, and come up with different products that most other people, let's say, for example, Pimax 
or you know maybe some another company that it doesn't have as much influence as Facebook may not necessarily get. And also Pico, not perhaps a lot of people know them outside of the Asia or China, so it might also be a little bit different or difficult for them to be able to generate those partnerships and distribution channels where they could potentially grow those user bases outside of China or outside of Asia. So for the Western market, it might be a little bit more challenging for smaller companies or companies who focus purely on the China market. So before you even decide whether you want to join the Oculus system, ecosystem or another ecosystem, I think this is something that's quite important to first of all factor in before you make that decision. Now personally for me as a let's say content creator what really spurred me to buy the Oculus Quest and I did mention this in the video whether you should get the Go or the Quest at the time was really because I have a YouTube channel and I really wanted to create content so by having the platform it really forced me to try to you know try all the different VR applications that are available so that I could communicate what pr pretty much what kind of use they may have for you as an end user and whether it's something that would be for you but also trying to understand you know who is behind making all these games what is their purpose what's their mission what is it that they're trying to achieve so that it could potentially help us as a whole as a, as a global industry or community not just for the present times but also how we're going to together grow within this ecosystem potentially in the future and what kind of apps are really more interesting to some people versus other kind of experiences for, for that matter. So for me, it's really brought me all over the place. I mean, I traveled all over China where, you know, for the first time in China, there, there was no such thing as the Pico standalone and there's no such thing as, you know, any form of standalone headset at the time when I went, even DPVR, uh, although they had a standalone uh, three DOF, they, didn't, they don't have a standalone six DOF, even though DPVR created a lot of stuff for the enterprise. Um, you know, all, all the Quest apps when I went to China were all well, I mean, pretty much they're all banned still. So the Quest itself is, you know, behind the firewall and you, you can't download any installations or any updates. And the only app that I think is available in China that you can use is um, Alt Space VR, which perhaps today is blocked, but the last time I used it, I was able to use it over there, which was amazing when I had when, when I was able to, because it was an amazing feeling to connect with people from the West using Alt Space VR was the only experience, social experience uh, that I was able to use when I was there. But you know, when I what 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 happened was is I was able to work with people. Like for example, uh, I did a project with the uh, bronze man list of the 2007. Uh, World Boxing Championships, who was also a boxing Olympian for their nation. And together we used the Oculus Quest. We had two quests with us and we gave it to the youth Olympic boxing team, which he was training. And we, for one month together, we did an experiment. Uh, by the way, subscribe to the channel as I will be releasing that uh, content pretty soon during the year, uh, where we tried to see whether the, the quest could actually help the boxers to prepare for the next Olympics in Japan. And, you know, we used several different apps from, uh, I think it was Creed, it was... Uh, I think it was uh, Box VR. Uh, there was also we used also um, Beat Saber and various different apps, and, and we put them through a schedule every single day through the week, five days a week basically. As normally they would train about uh, eight or nine hours a day, we put them through a one hour or two hour VR schedule every single day to see how it could actually help them for the next Olympics. And I'm happy to say that it actually helped them. Like he felt and they felt like it helped them in terms of the reflexes. Uh, it helped them in terms of preparing mentally what it would be like on the actual ring. Um, you know, various different things and also being able to, to differentiate where the movements were coming from, you know, all these kind of things. So that's really what amazed me was when I was able to use the Quest for those purposes. And also when I went to meet up with a musician, okay, we used the Go more than the Oculus Quest, but we also used the Quest. Now this musician works for, uh, not works for, I mean, performs with the, the China... National Orchestra and you know she personally told me that sometimes she has anxiety and a lot of the musicians who work with her have a lot of anxiety and they don't really know how to prepare and then they also and also sorry the other thing she said was uh, a lot of the musicians they're very good technically like they, they they can close their eyes they know exactly you know where to put their hands and the fingers and everything and they know how to create the music but you know, in China, they don't really think in terms of, they're not encouraged to think creatively. Uh, they're more encouraged to do technical things like, 
you know, playing some sonata as, soon, as fast as possible, but they're not really encouraged to think out the box and come up with their own ideas and those kind of things. So what she told me was the fact that when she was able to put the VR headset on, it really uh, enabled her to think about the notes, where she would be playing them and how, you know, the VR experience could lead her to create a different genre of music or how to empathize more with the music that she's actually playing. So I thought that was very interesting. And then also uh, the fact that the Oculus Quest for me, and this is another reason why I'm, I'm quite happy not to have, you know, waited a year or two years before the technology becomes so much better, um, is the fact that I was able to start a business with it. Oh, Giselle's not getting kicked off. It's totally going to be summer. <laughs> What? Just, just, uh, Sheldon's onion ring. Just put it back. It's one onion just ring. Put it back before he comes. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think that's where it was. Okay, here he comes. <laughs> deny, 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 people. Wall of silence. <laughs> the Oculus Quest today, of course, as I mentioned, there are so many more apps. Uh, you know, that, that a lot of people like that aren't necessarily social and others that are social that provide a lot of value uh, that aren't, I would say, purely from the gaming shooters, you know, just killing people and that's it, but more from the practical applications, especially the fitness, um, which has taken hold of a big market. You know, when we look at Racket NX, for example, uh, which is a very popular app and you get to move your entire body to 11 table tennis VR. Of course, the, the PC VR version of this app is much more developed than the Quest version, but nonetheless, the Quest version is still something that offers a lot of value. And ping pong is something that is one of the most successful uh, games of all time that offers a lot of cognitive uh, enhancement development for the brain. So, And also it has a social aspect to the game as well. So you can meet other people and play with uh, like-minded individuals who also like table tennis. And there are other apps, for example, Colorspace, which offers really amazing experience where you get to color different things. And, you know, within virtual reality, it's very relaxing. And it's just a nice app if you just want to forget about your day without having to think about, you know, killing zombies, for example, or killing anything or anyone uh, for, for that matter. Another app that is fairly recent and that provides another tremendous experience, and that is fantastic. So do subscribe to the channel and click the bell because we will be doing a review of this app. It's just so wonderful. How could we not? Is Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect, which of course, uh, you know, provides the ability to really enhance your intelligence, your cognitive abilities, because you have to solve clues as fast as possible. But, you know, it's built within a artistic, musical uh, kind of way where you get to become almost one of the musicians uh, as when you move the buttons and all these kind of things, the music changes. It's just such a wonderfully put together kind of app. I mean, you wouldn't think so, right? You would think the Tetris, come on, it's just a, you know, crappy experience. Believe me, I think personally it is the game of the year uh, on the Oculus Quest. Uh, it's just fantastically made. But let's move on and let, let, let's try to explore, you know, why is this that perhaps you should wait uh, for the Oculus Quest 2 instead of splashing your cash, uh, you know, on the Oculus Quest 1. When we look at the Oculus Quest 2, now the Oculus Quest 2 has been, you know, announced. And yes, of course, we know that Oculus are always going to be working on the next big thing. That is very normal. Um, you know, when they release the Oculus Quest 2, we know that they're already working on the Oculus Quest 3, the Oculus Oculus Quest 4, etc. and etc. But the question is, when are they actually going to release these headsets? Well, we need to look at the ecosystem of the industry to give us clues as to, you know, how fast are they trying to wrap up? Um, you know, how fast do they actually want to release these headsets without, you know, upsetting the community, especially those who perhaps uh, today, as it's June, are thinking of buying an Oculus Quest or who are perhaps already bought it and they're waiting for it and it will be delivered, let's say, in July or in August because, you know, as we all know, uh, Oculus have stopped the ability to deliver the product to people's homes. Now, we know that since COVID-19, okay, things have been a bit more difficult in terms of the, the supply chain. But at the same time, China has actually opened up and all the factories are working again. So for them to say that, uh, you know, things are not being delivered because uh, there's a supply chain issue, that is not true whatsoever. Um, I think, personally speaking, they're stopping things, they're slowing things down because, well, 
first of all, there has been quite a lot of complaints in terms of how heavy the headset really is. And as someone who uses, you know, the Oculus Quest on a daily basis to do VR reviews, to test out apps and all these things, I can tell you that I can really feel it uh, in my neck. I can feel some pain. So it's very possible that the Oculus Quest could actually be causing some issues. And, you know, and also they don't want to have the next batch of people complaining. They really want the next batch of people to be able to have as good as an experience as they possibly can. So when we also look at the market and how it's doing, well, the HP Reverb uh, has just released a new headset. Pico have just released the new headset as well. DPVR uh, are releasing their new headset. Uh, Mova are releasing a new headset. Um, Valve are most undoubtedly going to be releasing a new headset. Pimax are probably going to be releasing a new headset too. And then we have, of course, all the different MR viewers, uh, mixed reality viewers, that are going to be released very soon, uh, as we know that Qualcomm have partnered with 15 to 30 different people. Now, of course, these headsets are not virtual reality headsets, but nonetheless, they play part in the ecosystem, which means that people will now have the choice to either buy a pair of glasses they can put on their face just to view, for example, some Netflix or some Amazon Prime, or to do some very basic uh, because a lot of these headsets are not going to be AR capable, which means you won't be able to, you know, use things like uh, 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 space or you won't be able to use Meet in VR. You won't be able to use those apps that provide, you know, AR functionality, but you will be able to use some MR mixed reality uh, functionality where you just view something, but you can't actually press on something. So this is going to say, well, if, do I spend 200 bucks, 300 bucks on one of those glasses? Or will I spend, you know, 300 or five or $600 on a, a VR headset? So the moment that you spent your money on, on an MR viewer, which quite frankly doesn't even compare anything against a VR headset, well, that budget is going to be gone and people will not want to buy a VR headset. So the question is, how fast should Oculus release the VR headset? And to be honest with you, they should release it as soon as possible, um, pot potentially before Christmas, so that people who, who want to get into VR and buy something for uh, the loved one or for themselves, then they should do it during the Christmas time when they can have the uh, promotional prices and all those kind of things. And also, of course, uh, let's not forget that uh, PlayStation will be releasing the PS5. Although the date has been delayed, delayed, uh, they will also undoubtedly have another VR headset that's going to come out. So that's also going to bring all the VR gamers on board into potentially buying their console uh, VR. Because um, if we look at HP, which is saying their new headset at $600 US is targeting the gamers, which means they're actually going to be competing with 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 Sony, with PlayStation, and also with Oculus, of course. So, you know, I think if you're looking at waiting for the Oculus Quest 2, well, I, I honestly, you know, if you don't have the budget to, you know, buy one today uh, and, and, you know, wait six months or potentially eight months for the Oculus Quest 2, then I say wait for the Oculus, Oculus Quest 2. And, you know, because the experience that you're going to have for the Oculus Quest 2 is obviously going to provide you with a different experience that we are having with the Oculus Quest number one. First of all, the field of view will be better, for sure. Secondly, it's going to be a much lighter headset. Lighter by how much, we don't know, but it might be lighter by 100 grams, or let's say between 100 to maybe 300 or 350 grams. You know, it's not going to be lighter by one kg. That's not possible right now. But it will definitely be lighter on the head. Uh, what will the design be? We don't know. Are they going to separate the, the, the CPU at the back and then have the viewer at the front? We're not quite sure. But it will be lighter. The touch controllers, although to be very fair, um, you know, there's no delay. You know, generally speaking, the touch controllers are very good. Although Oculus Quest, every time they do an update, there are some issues like I released... Uh, a video very recently about this. Do go in the link, in the link description below uh, where you can find the bugs report video that I just uploaded two, three days ago. Undoubtedly, there are bugs, but you know the, the touch controllers work perfectly. There will be more cameras on it, for sure. There's going to, I mean, at the moment, there are four. There'll probably be, I would say, at least five, if not six cameras, maybe two added on the side, or maybe one at the back, like we have for the Rift S. Um, 
you know, so they'll definitely be better. Pass view will probably undoubtedly be in color, not in black and white. So that's going to provide even more mixed reality, which is going to compete with the Lynx, which is supposed to be released uh, in June, even though the Lynx will be probably a bit more expensive, around the 1000 mark. Uh, and also it's geared more towards enterprise than the actual consumer market. You know, it, it's going to offer those mixed reality things that it's not able to offer today. Uh, then, of course, the chip itself is going to be a better chip, whether it will be the XR2 or whether it will be a more powerful Snapdragon. We're not sure. don't want to wait six months or potentially eight months then I think just get it now get to enjoy the ecosystem today don't wait for the time but just realize that perhaps um, you know we're looking at the official launch date probably I would imagine around uh, Oculus I would say Connect 7 so probably around September or October I think is when they're going to make the initial announcement only because they did talk to you know the Business Times and uh, other various different newspapers who have actually divulged to the general public a potential launch date. And they said that it was supposed to come out this year. Now, they said that in these articles, it was going to come out, they're going to delay by a year. But honestly speaking, with all the different VR headsets coming out, and the fact that HP are already amassing people, and Pico are already amassing people, building those, you know, uh, those potential lists of buyers, giving them money, like, Actual, actually by pre-ordering basically they're pre-ordering so they're actually taking people's money already um, I think it's going to force uh, Oculus in a little corner uh, in having no choice but to say all right well this is when it's going to come out we have no choice and this is simply because the current Oculus Quest to me personally is more of an experimental ground in trying to see how the current Oculus Quest users are using it what kind of issues they're having with it, what kind of apps are popular, you know, all those kind of things. And of course, when the next Oculus Quest comes out, even though there is a talk about changing slightly the design of the uh, controllers because the, the cover of the Oculus Touch controller is actually coming off when people are using them, um, you know, they might tweak certain things here and there, but I think in terms of adaptation from the current games is not going to change that much. They can't. They can't make a huge jump like this. It's not possible. Uh, otherwise, I think they're going to upset the community. And when I mean the community, I mean the actual developers who've been building all the different apps for the new quest. I don't think they're going to want to jump and change all their apps and update them to a point where they have to redo a lot of code uh, in order to, you know, to make sure that people can use them in the Oculus Quest 2. I think it's going to be very, in my opinion, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think, it, I mean, tell me what you think. Leave a comment below. I personally think that, you know, it's going to be very progressive and organic kind of uh, progression from the Oculus Quest to the Oculus Quest 2, where the apps are not going to change that much. And, you know, the developers are not going to have to redo too much work or any work for that matter. And they can just use them directly uh, on the Oculus Quest 2, uh, other than perhaps, you know, refresh some of the things so that it can adapt to the new refresh rate or perhaps a new graphic. So they might change, for example, the settings of the anti-aliasing. Um, so, you know, they can bump up the anti-aliasing a bit. But all those kind of things are quite, you know, they're not so hard to do. They're not so long to do versus having to redo the entire touch controller system or the entire, you know, um, Locomotion system, you know, those are the kind of things that really take a lot more time to redo. So I think it's going to be more of an organic and progressive uh, change when the Oculus Quest 2 comes out. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today's episode, episode number one of Metaverse. Please remember to like and subscribe, share some loves that you and I together we can help grow the community and help as many people in VR. Leave your comments below. I'd love to get your thoughts about this new show, this new format. If it's something you like, I would love to know. Or if you want me to make it better of some kind, some way, leave your suggestions below so that you and I can make it better. All right, until next time, remember to take it easy, stay safe, and always, DJ, take it away.